In this video, we'll continue our discussion of congruent triangles, but now we've moved those triangles onto the coordinate plane. Let's go ahead and jump right in. It says that we are given triangle ABC with the given vertices and triangle DEF with the given vertices, and we're being asked to prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and plot the given triangles on the coordinate axes, just so that I can get a really vi good visual feel for exactly what these triangles look like. So there's triangle ABC. Now I know where triangle DEF is located. And at this point, I'm looking at those, trying to say to myself, is there some sequence of rigid motions that I can use to map one triangle onto the other? Because if there is, then I'm going to be done. However, I'm not seeing a sequence of rigid motions that will map one triangle onto the other. So I said, OK, I tried that. It didn't work. I've got to find it uh, a different way. I know that if I can show three sides in one triangle congruent to three sides in the second triangle, I know that my triangles will be congruent by side, side, side. And I also know that I can find the lengths of each side of one of these triangles by using my distance formula. So that's kind of going to be kind of my method or my plan is to find the length of each side and then show that the triangles have three pairs of congruent sides, or three sides of equal measure. So the formula that I have that enables me, or allows me, to find the length of each side of the triangle is the distance formula. So anytime I'm going to use a formula, I of course need to write the formula down on my paper. And now I'm going to get busy and get down to work, and I'm going to find the length of each side of the green triangle, find the length of each side of the blue triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my green triangle. Since I'm going to be finding the lengths of six different segments, I'm going to be very careful on my paper to carefully indicate exactly which distances I'm finding. So the first length I'm going to find is this distance between points A and B, which will be the length of line segment AB. So I'm going to indicate to anybody reading my paper Hey world, this is what I'm finding. I'm finding the length of segment AB, or the distance between points A and B. Now I'm going to go ahead and dig out my calculator so that I can use it to compute the length of segment AB. You go ahead and at home dig out your calculator also so that you can double check my computations and get some practice using the distance formula. So my calculator tells me that the distance between points A and B is square root of 10. So I'm going to go ahead and label that in the picture. And then I'm going to move on to find the distance between points B and C, the second side of my triangle. And again, as I'm performing these computations in the video, you want to be performing these computations also so that you can get the practice that you need to be the very best you can be with using the distance formula. Twenty-six isn't a perfect square, nor does it have any factors that are perfect squares, so I don't need to worry about simplifying that radical. And I'm going to go ahead and label that in my picture. And then I'll go ahead and move on to find the third side of that triangle, which is side AC. And 
again, you want to make sure that you're performing the computations on your own so that you get the practice that you need. And check and make sure that I'm doing performing the computations correctly. So underneath the radical sign this time, I end up with 32. And while 32 is not a perfect square, it does have some factors that are. The largest factor of 32 that's a perfect square is 16. And 16 will go in there exactly twice. So I'm going to simplify or reduce that radical to 4 square roots of 2. So now that I know the length of each side of the first triangle, I'm going to go ahead and compute the length of each side of the second triangle. So let's see, side DE should match up with AB, so I'll go find that one first. And again, you should be punching these numbers into your calculator at home as I'm entering them into my calculator while making the video. And I end up with exactly the same length as I had for AB, which is a good sign. If I had ended up with something different for those two, I would have known that I had made a mistake somewhere along the line with my computations. All right, so let's go ahead and find the distance between points E and F, or in other words, the length of line segment E, F. And likewise, I came up with the same length for segment EF as I did for segment BC, which is a really good sign. And then the last one I need to find is segment DF. And once again, the square root of 32 can be simplified. So the length of segment DF is 4 square roots of 2. And again, notice that in each and every case, I clearly identified to the person reading my paper exactly which segments I was finding lengths for. You want to make sure that as you're performing these computations that you do exactly the same thing. So if I look at my picture, I've got side AB congruent to side ED because they have the same length. Side EF is congruent to side BC because they have the same length. And side AC is congruent to side DF because they have the same length. So I'm going to go ahead and say that triangle ABC has to be congruent to side DEF because they have three pairs of congruent sides. Making them congruent by side, side, side. Now some of you might be asking yourself the question, why sides? Why didn't we find the measures of angles? 
Well, we don't really have a formula on the coordinate plane that enables us to find the measures of angles unless they're right angles. And since we don't know for sure whether or not the triangles contain right angles, we can't prove that angles are congruent. But sides is a sure bet. We can always use distance formula to find the sides of any triangle. All right, as always, I'm going to have you summarize in your own words the key ideas and important takeaways, and then see if you can apply what you've learned in order to prove the triangle MON congruent to triangle POQ on the next page.